Hello friends, in this video we're going to look at this Techniques Compact Disc Changer model SL-MC4. This is billed as a 60 plus 1 CD changer. I got this at a private thrift store recently for literally one dollar. They were selling everything in the store except furniture for one dollar so I picked this up. I've seen a lot of uh, compact disc players around the thrift stores. They're very common and cheap. Uh, there are many different options. One of the common types is a has a five CD tray and there's also some others that have kind of a cartridge format where you put in a cartridge that maybe holds 10 CDs and you could have multiple cartridges and kind of swap those in and out but this is an unusual design that has kind of a sort of a jukebox format you can see here you put in the CDs and uh, after folding down the front panel and then run it from there I haven't tried this out have no idea whether it works or not so I'll do what I always do in these cases which is turn it on with the power meter going to see if the power is uh, within scale just plugged it into my watt meter it's showing about three watts as ambient power with it turned off that's normal for um, having a standby power for remote control this didn't come with a remote control but uh, I may be able to find one somewhere if, if it's of interest we'll turn on the power here we have lights coming on it's making some grinding noises and saying checking disc this doesn't have any discs in it at the moment so that's maybe normal power here has gone up to 8 watts it says error and it's kind of making some nasty chunky noises I don't know if that's a problem or just normal with no discs involved but I'm going to put a disc in and see what happens I haven't looked at the instructions on this yet but it's got a little picture here that shows you how to load the disc here's a copy disc I made of one of my CDs years ago just put that in there let's pull another one out so if this has any problems tears up the CDs that's not really a big loss I don't haven't been using these copies in a long time anyway so let's close up the lid and see what happens I'm going to let's see I think this has some sort of search or disk skip, skip button. Put those in in the middle. Maybe that's not a great idea. Let's put them in at the beginning. I moved this one down and put it in this little slot and I didn't realize that uh, it looks like this button is a mechanical system to sort of eject the CD. We'll try putting this one in like tell you what we'll just start with one and keep our ambitions small you can see there's a fold away panel that's mechanically linked back there and a chain drive of some kind that looks like it runs the the selector mechanism whatever that is so we'll go to disk one which I assume is what this is I don't have any audio connected to this yet so we'll just kind of see if it basically appears to play reading track 01 okay that's all very good here's a look at the back panel we've got a standard AV type power connector line out and optical out one of the nice features of this is with the optical out you can run it into the AV receiver of your choice and use its own built-in D to A converter instead of the one that happens to be in here which we don't know is good or bad or indifferent 
title of my CD came up here. This is called Pirates of Penzance by the Welsh National Opera. So I've selected the uh, input on this red cable that comes over here to the back. We're going to play just a little bit of that to see if music comes out. I really expect that it will. So that's the overture to the Pirates of Penzance and the tune is uh, Pirate King but uh, to the YouTube copyright police I consider 15 seconds fair use so we may mute part of that if we have to but anyway we have a real success here in our next uh, stage we'll take the lid off of this and see how the mechanism works inside it it has this very nice blue uh, color here which is I just noticed this has the standard four side screws and two back screws that sort of thing is generally pretty standard for AV equipment with some changes this is interesting I'm feeling the 60 Hertz buzzing on the case which I know from experience is a suggest a shock hazard so that'll be something we look into this has a two prong cord which is polarized and shouldn't be backwards but my experience with these things has been that when you feel that buzzing something is really wrong and it's a potential shock hazard this may have the so-called death capacitor in it, in it I'm not sure I plugged this in through my isolation transformer that I made in one of my very first videos so we'll get that going again and you can't tell this at home but the 60 Hertz vibration I was feeling on here isn't there anymore so that confirms what I suspected of some electrical short we'll keep that plugged into the isolation transformer when I use it for now until I uh, sort out whatever's wrong there as a quick test I'm gonna put in one of these power line connection testers I've taken the isolation transformer out of it but just using the tester itself you can buy these at hardware stores for a few dollars so this has two yellow lights which on this tester indicates that the connection is correct so that means that everything here to the wall is correct which I kind of knew but uh, that confirms it and the problem must be somewhere in this unit in fact what's interesting it's unplugged and I'm still feeling that vibration I don't know if you can hear that but Now that I don't understand. Let's take my other stereo off of here. That's the only thing that's connected to. Huh. Well, it must be related to my stereo unit. I didn't even know that had a problem. So to trace this a bit further, this is where the stereo amplifier that I was using was plugged in. It's got the two yellow lights, so that means it's this outlet is fine. I've plugged that back in for demonstration purposes. So I've got one side of my AC voltmeter plugged into the earth ground pin, and on the 
other side of the stereo output which is what was connected to the chassis of the CD player we'll see what the voltage is there zero right now but if I turn on the power this has a relay you hear the humming which is okay since this is unplugged so next let's look at our volts here seventy two point seven volts so that's between what's supposed to be the audio ground and earth ground and that means that something is wrong inside this stereo amplifier so I'm gonna decommission that for now and uh, we'll focus back again on the CD player I've got the CD player unplugged and turned around taken all the screws out of it that we looked at before Let's see if I can do this with one hand well, we'll do a before and after shot voila here it is with the lid taken off I'm struck by how much empty space there is here basically they made it probably wider than it needs to be to kind of fit the standard width factor of this type of equipment people want to stack it on top of each other so that makes sense uh, here I'm going to pull down the front lid which we can see this kind of a safety mechanism move around in effect that's to keep you from poking your fingers into the rest of it this front panel is self-contained I haven't quite figured out where the power and signals get through that yet but there's probably some sort of ribbon cable hidden in here that we can't see looking into the mechanism you know this is all plastic this appears to be a probably a fairly standard CD player with some add-ons like this gearing to travel back and forth to pick up a disc I don't know how it actually picks up a disc out of this I guess one thing we could try is watching it with the lid off I'm gonna continue to use my isolation transformer here just kind of for an extra safety feature but my testing showed that this wasn't the problem so it looks like this does a kind of a boot up travel back and forth let's see if we can play looks like it has some sort of ejector down here that pops it in more or less in a kind of a standard way so here we have an audio output board probably as well as the optical output which goes from here through this little ribbon cable so this is probably just the optical LED and a couple of minimal support components that comes all the way over here it looks like to this point I'm not gonna get my fingers in there too far because there might be some power line voltage there this is kind of a simple power supply here's our two output connectors so on a uh, back to the shock hazard part basically the 70 something volts that I had was going to these shield pins on the RCA connectors which are electrically connected to this whole outside chassis box so the design of this is okay 
from a safety point of view in itself except that they're assuming that you're not going to put any voltage on the on the output connectors and that would be a good assumption if the other unit weren't faulty after having looked at this a little bit more I've got some idea of how it works this is purely a mechanical system here and it has detents for each CD number has a numbering scheme with it tens and then ones here so that's all pretty straightforward so let's take a tour through the mechanism to see how this really works there's this large motor here that runs a little gear train that ends on these three gears this one's just an idler gear but these two gears and their mates on the bottom keep this moving back and forth parallel there's this cable mechanism that goes all the way across a little thin cable and ends in this spring over here you can just barely see that blinking LED light uh, I believe is a slot counter mechanism of some kind there's an LED and probably an LED sensor that picks up when the light is interrupted this thing can actually play while it's loading so here we're at almost 30 seconds let's pretend we loaded it with something now we're at 38 seconds so to watch this in progress I'm gonna do disk skip to the previous disk So it had to orient itself on both ends. Then it put the disc it was running back in the slot. It's going to go back to. Well, I thought it was going to go to the next one. Okay, now we'll go to the next one. And to. Uh, make the little thing earn its pay we'll go all the way to the far end so overall I'm rather impressed with this as a design now from a user's point of view it's it's pretty obvious that this is a inexpensive unit so my guess is that they were shooting for a market niche in which you could have a fairly high capability a 60 CD player that was probably high capacity in its day but really fairly inexpensive by the fairly clever mechanism after having looked at the CD player itself I can see that that's not at all a standard player at least as far as the mechanics and the the shell and so on I'm guessing that the interior of it is pretty standard and probably all the smarts that do the logic and control are actually built into this same panel that runs the, uh, the front panel and the buttons and so on and we know from the fact that this has a standby power usage that it has a remote control that would go with it uh, I didn't get that but um, you know it makes sense you would want to have remote control for a unit like this basically all CD players of this era came with remote control so this is impressive from an engineering standpoint where the main engineering goal is to provide a lot of functionality in a really inexpensive design that could be mass produced. From a user's point of view, this isn't too impressive. It looks nice, but the plastic use in it is pretty uh, alarming. 
like I can really imagine any of these plastic pieces getting broken off in ordinary use and uh, you know then you're out of luck but as it turns out this one either didn't get a lot of use or maybe the user was careful with it but it seems to work perfectly in every function that I've tried so far so I think uh, we're gonna call this a success I definitely got my dollars worth out of it hope you got a dollars worth of entertainment uh, watching this so we'll wrap up there thanks for watching and bye bye